Let's talk about beer and why St. Pete has an incredible craft beer scene. We've been in St. Pete for a few months now, so it's only right that we start making videos here and what better way to start than a brewery tour. We are drinking through most of the breweries in downtown St. Pete and we'll be rating them on beer selection, atmosphere, and what else we love about them. But we're gonna be spreading this over a couple of days because we can only drink so much and we want you to form your own opinions about each place that we visit. We'll start with this brewery that was named after its hometown and has been on the block for nine years, St. Pete Brewing Company. They have a flight here named The Tony, so obviously I had to get that, but Sarah also got the Drop Dead Gorgeous Pumpkin Ale. We will be rating each of these places on the atmosphere and the selection of beers. If any of these places offer food, they are going to get the Golden Burger. They have food here, so they get a golden burger. We got the french fries here, chicken wings and pretzel bites, and there's a popcorn machine. We like the atmosphere here. It feels very local, so for that, it gets a four out of five. The beers are solid, but the homemade apple pie cider is where it's at, giving it a four. But if we included all the ciders, it would probably be a little bit higher. Cycle is a great spot, especially if you like sweet and dark beers because they're known for their barrel aged stouts. I got the Mouth Adventure IPA and Sarah got the Prickly Pear Sour. I'd give the atmosphere here about a four. For the beers, I give it a three, but I think we need to go back and try the stouts to be more accurate. Our next stop is Overflow. Overflow definitely feels like a low-key local spot, but there is an outdoor seating area as well, which we did not get to film. For beer, we gave it a three and a half, mostly because we feel like it didn't have a huge selection on tap, but we did really love what we ordered. For atmosphere, we're gonna give it a three. It's definitely a good dive spot. Up next, we travel to the Edge District. The Edge District is one of downtown St. Pete's most vibrant neighborhoods. It's here you'll find Green Bench Brewing Company and its second tasting room, Web City Cellar. For beers, we got the Push It Goes Sour and the Alice, which was also a sour, but it was a wine barrel aged mixed culture sour golden ale. Atmosphere here is very good as long as it's not raining and it's not like mosquito season because most of the seating is outdoors. We'll give Green Bench a four for beers and a four and a half for atmosphere. It's a nice spot for a group outing and they also have Web City Cellar next door with even more beers in a more intimate setting. Neither tasting room has food, but there is a taco shop next door, food trucks and restaurants surrounding them. Another great way to see all these breweries is using this, the child. You can pretty much walk to all these St. Pete breweries because they're all situated along a straight path. It takes about 30 to 40 minutes to walk from end to end. But when it's hot or you've had a bit to drink, you're probably not gonna wanna do that. That's where the Central Avenue trolley comes in. There's trolley stops all along Central Avenue and at Grand Central Station, you can take different bus routes to go throughout the city and even to the beaches. Avid Brewing Company is next on our path, but we're gonna come back to that later. For now, we'll head to Pinellas Ale Works and Cage Brewing. We are going to head into Pinellas Ale Works, or PAW, P-A-W for short, which is a very clever pun because your dogs are welcome here. This is a very dog-friendly bar. They encourage you to bring your pups with you. They have dog treats inside. They have dog-themed beers on the menu. So we're gonna go check it out, even though we don't have a pup. This is not where you belong. Take another step. For our beers, I got the pumpkin ale. And I got the smoke dog. Paw was super 
spacious. There is a lot of indoor and outdoor area. They even have an event space if you want to have an event here. Really good selection of beers with a lot of variety, which was really nice. I'm gonna give beers four and a half out of five because they had such a wide selection, which I really appreciated. Environment, I think if you have a dog, five out of five. Since we don't, I'll give it like a three and a half to a four. Also, we think there's a food truck, but it wasn't open. Across the street from Pa is Cage Brewing. Cage Brewing is a super fun stop on this tour and right in the heart of the Grand Central District. There are two tap rooms inside with plenty of arcade games, foosball, and pinball machines to enjoy while tasting one of their 18 beers available on tap. There's also a food truck selling barbecue right on the property, so they get a gold burger. Here, I got the Cage Blonde Ale. And I got the Golden Buddha. It's got a little bit more of a divey feel, even though the place is huge. Beers here are pretty good. I rate them probably 3.75 in the atmosphere, I give about a four. Three Daughters Brewing is a massive brew pub, so there's almost always an event or something fun going on throughout the warehouse tasting room, game rooms, and large open air patio. Plus, if someone isn't as into beer, Three Daughters Brewing also has ciders and cocktails on draft as well. This place really is an all in one. There's plenty of beer on tap, but there's also fun and games and food. My first beer, I got the Beach Blonde, and after that, I actually tried the Sangria. And I got the Pink Hibiscus Ale, which was very light and refreshing. I think I'll give it a four and a half on beers. Honestly, I want to go five because I've loved everything that I've ever had at Three Daughters, but I've also never tried the darker beers like the Stout. This will get you drunk. Ooh, tart. That'll get you drunk. <laughs> Three Daughters also has a large food menu, live music, and a game room. The atmosphere is a solid four. I brewed the world. It's a small brew pub, but it has great beers. No kidding, some of the best beer I've had in St. Pete. They have this berry crunch that tastes like Fruit Loops, and it is delicious. Right around the corner is, well, right around the corner. This is our next stop and the first arcade brewery in St. Pete. The There's so many classic game systems here, some of which I haven't seen since I was a kid. About a block down the road is Grand Central Brewery. It's a two-story brewery, tap room, and beer garden located in St. Pete's Grand Central District. Vibe definitely feels more on scale to a restaurant, but still not too commercial or industrial that some breweries seem to lean towards. Here, Tony got slap into bays. But that bass! And I got another bay, another baller. You can also order food from Lala St. Pete without leaving your seat. So for that, we'll give it a golden burger. I love Brussels sprouts. I love Brussels sprouts. The Brussels I've got artichoke hearts. I've got shrimp. I've got feta. I've got olives. I've got angel hair. I've got arugula. You can get burgers and fries here, but the majority of the food is a little more sophisticated than typical bar food. For beers, we'll give Grand Central Brewery a four. And for atmosphere, we'll also give it a four. Maybe even a five on the weekends when there's a bit larger crowd. Bayboro is probably the furthest away from Central Avenue. It's a bit hidden, but there's a gigantic mural on the side of the building which will lead you to find the place. Here I got the Puddle Pirate as an homage to my time spent in the Navy, and Sarah got the Chai Spice Cider. We gave it a three and a half for beers and a four for atmosphere. This is also another place with a full food menu. We got the bacon, the chicken sandwich, and the barnhouse burger.
Remember earlier we said we'd double back to Avid? We wanted to show this one last because despite being in St. Pete for 10 years, they are having to shut down soon. So this is our reminder to you, make sure to support your local breweries. That said, they are still here and it's a great tap room and they even have a home brew supply store on site. We visited 12 breweries in this video, and I have to say that we did not dislike a single one. All of them are great options for beer and incredible local businesses, so be sure to try them all for yourself. Beers here are good. I'd rate them probably three and seven fifths. <laughs> seven fifths? That's more than a whole. <laughs> so I think this place is a, it's a, you know. <laughs>